Okay. I always have to hesitate at the start of any new game on uh, on the Xbox with Twitch going here because I, I I don't know when it starts recording. It takes a while to kick in. Um, we're taking a look at a, an interesting game today. Um, I would love to be playing another roguelike on the PC, uh, but again, until I get my sound issues fixed, I don't know if you saw the last roguelike I uploaded there, but I sounded a bit like an undead robot, so... Until I get those sound issues fixed, uh, the Xbox is an easier place to record. That said, we do have um, a bunch of games that are, if, if not precise roguelikes, uh, very roguelike-like. Um, there is at least one true bred roguelike on the Xbox One that we played on this channel before called Quest of Dungeons. It's a pretty cool game, you should check it out. Um, but today we're looking at Pixel Heroes. Um, a lot of roguelike elements, for sure. It's got... Um, you know, RPG progression of your characters, there is permadeath, there is um, a strict win-loss condition, as you can evidence here, I've never won. <laughs> um, my various uh, attempts at winning the game, you can see, are not uh, are not so great. But you can get details uh, if you go to the graveyard by clicking on, clicking on here and seeing how your characters fared, etc., etc. Um, at the various... This is one I quit, apparently. Um... So as you can see, it's, it's got some challenge level to it. I've, I've tried a number of times and just never quite beaten it because I suck at it. Um, but it does have those RPG elements. It does have the permadeath and it um, turn-based combat and random uh, generation of, of contents of rooms, if not um, true random mazes or anything. Very linear mazes, as you'll see. But let's dive in and give it a shot. We'll, we'll talk more about uh, what it has and what it hasn't as we go. One of the things it has, you've probably already noticed, is... Um, Music that can get a little grating. <laughs> Brace yourself for that. Um, this game plays out more, less like a standard uh, roguelike, and more like, um, if you've ever played, an excellent PC roguelike-like called Darkest Dungeons. This is like kind of like a tongue-in-cheek, um, low-fi version of, of that game. Um, as you see, there are three campaigns. I've never gotten off the first. Fools of Radiance, obviously a pun on the old D&D game, Pools of Radiance. Let's give it a shot. Welcome to the tavern. Some brave heroes have found their way to these far reaches, seeking treasures and glory. Hire three heroes for your epic adventure. Now, here's something very cool about this game. Um, there are a number of heroes that are available in the game. You start the game with access to a handful, but as you play through and hit different milestones, different uh, mini-achievements, more characters become available. Now, this is not all the characters that are in the game by any means. Um, it picks out of the selection that you do have available, it picks a handful of, I guess, six, and displays them here. You can also do this, um, apparently five times. Um, but I always think it's f most fun, just to, whatever six it gives you, you pick three of those, and that's what you're stuck with. Um, all the characters have different... Let's, let's look at him. Different stats. If you look on the left here, we can see this is only a human bard. There's a bunch of flavor text there. He was raised in a library, therefore he got more intelligence. He lifted some weights the other day. Strength went up. Blah, blah, blah. Um, the rest of the flavor text is really kind of irrelevant. What you really want to keep your eyes on are these stats. Above this, I can't, I can't highlight it all the way. Um, life 2, Strength 1, Dexterity 4, Intelligence 2, Faith 3. You can also see special abilities. This character has these two special abilities. Silly Sonata, which heals the party. Uh, 18 at the start of the game. Um, it also provides them 50% magic resistance, 50% physical resistance, 25% blessing, I think? 10% shadow, and 10% 10 chance of confusing them? I'm not sure, to be honest with you. Um, Song of Metal is the other one he has, uh, Inherent, which has a bunch of different uh, effects. Let's go back. Um, I'm definitely going to take this guy. Let's just go with him right off the bat. Um, and the reason I'm picking this guy is purely, if you look at his stats up there, Life 3, Strength 5, Dexterity 2, Intelligence 1, Faith 1, when you level up, you get a chance to increase some of your stats, and you can increase whatever stat you choose by the amount it started with. So essentially, because he started with Strength 5, um, or, or because he has Strength 5 here, th th what that's really displaying there is not, not his st current stats, it's um, how much points he will get in that category if, when you level up, you choose to elevate that category. So every time he levels up, we get increase his strength by 5, for instance, or his intelligence by 1. Um, 
I tend, I don't know if I'm right, I've never won, so probably I'm wrong, but uh, I tend to think if you can find a character with five in a given category, it's probably better. So we're going to hire him for sure. Um, we have Bud the Barbarian. The names change, the classes don't, but the names, uh, last time I hired him, he was Cronan. I think this is a pretty good, um, this is a Dexterity 5, guys. Have him, Jonquil, Skyborn, Ronin. And let's hire, especially with somebody with magic or faith. Uh, we got a lot of rogues here, man. That's not good. Another one with nice uh, dexterity, but uh, yeah, a lot of rogues. As I said, I prefer to um, stick with what we get, so I'm not going to really roll anything. Faith and intelligence are terrible here. Wolf Rider, very mediocre, like very middling stats, but, but very versatile, therefore. Uh, we might be stuck with a bard, actually. All right, let's go with the bard. Um, perhaps not my first choice, but whatever, it'll do. All right, here's our party: Bud the Barbarian, Jonquil the Skyborn Ronin, and only the bard. Let's go. As you saw, there are three campaigns. What you're trying to do in the campaign, to be perfectly honest, I'm not entirely sure, but we'll figure it out in a second. I guess we're gonna find out right here. Listen. The end is nigh. Hear my words and prepare. An ancient cult has set foot in our lands. They call themselves the Sons of Dawn and pray to some dark elder being. They have started recruiting people for their cause all over the country. I fear that they want to try to awaken something which should be left sleeping. Something dangerous and sinister. Something that might destroy us all. Spend your last of days wisely. We will meet again once the time has come for your final quest. I have... Either made it right to the final quest and died during it, or come close. I don't think I've quite um, made it through. So here we are. Very odd control scheme here, by the way. If you're playing on the Xbox, press right trigger to move right, and left trigger to move left. Isn't that fucking weird? You can't use the... Uh, using the joystick just moves this thing around. Um, but let's go talk to some people here. Let's talk to this person, Sapphire. Sapphire, troll the trolls, the old volcano. Hey, listen, I could use your help in dealing with a delicate situation. Before I arrived here in this town, my ex-party and I were ambushed by some weird-looking trolls. They somehow managed to steal my magic amulet and sell it to some ancient creature. Could you please be so kind and get this amulet back for me? Sure. Now, if you're really smart, to be honest, um, yes, that's the spirit. Take care of yourself and good luck. As you saw, this gentleman here, also Shroom, had, a, had an exclamation point above his head a minute ago. There are a number of quests that have to be completed, and I think you can complete them in any order. Like, you can go up to who you want, and if we just said maybe later there, we could have gone up to the next guy and said, what's your quest? Eventually, you're going to have to do them all, but um, you can kind of do them whatever order you want, and there are reasons to uh, choose one over the other. You're en route to one destination or another, in this case, the old volcano. Um, one of the things I don't love about this game is there are a bunch of different dungeons and there are different things that are useful to know before entering that dungeon. The old volcano, you can guess, I'm pretty sure, is has a lot of fire-based monsters, so if you can get your fire resistance up before heading there, that's a good thing as an example. We didn't do that, of course, so we probably shouldn't even have accepted that quest, but um, there's a bunch of different things you can learn, and You'll meet characters on the way who can tell you about these things, but unless you're playing frequently, you're actually going to want to get out a pen and paper and write this shit down. I have not done this. That's why I can't remember for sure if the old volcano is you know, a situation where you really want to bump up your fire resistance. There are a couple of places that are kind of fire-based. One of them is useful to raise your fire resistance. Another one is useful to do other things, and I don't recall what they all are, to be honest with you. Let's see what we have for inventory, by the way. What are we using, just so we know? Um, our human bard... A mediocre spear of boredom, mediocre leather, leather of mediocrity, and a mediocre axe of boredom. Something to uh, point out, it took me a long time to cotton to this. Um, if you look where it says mediocre spear of boredom, you can see the range, 1 to 2. Okay, we can hit between 1 and 2 um, ranks of, of um, enemies deep. It does physical damage, 31, easy enough. But if you're trying to figure out what that 31, how that 31 is derived, it's not inherent in the spear that the spear does 31. The spear inherently does 10 damage, plus 50% of your strength, which in this case is 27 for this character. No, it's 40, pardon me. And 40% of your dexterity, which is 24. So if you add all of that up, uh, 10 plus 50% of 40 plus 40% of 24, you end up with 31. 
This one, on the other hand, uses 9 plus 90% of your strength plus 20% of your dexterity. So you're going to want to keep an eye as you go on the weapons, how they balance out, and what they play off of. For this particular character, if we intend to raise our strength a lot, finding something that plays off primarily strength is going to be very useful for him. Um, by contrast, we go down to him. He only starts with the one thing. Uh, plus, This is plus two physical uh, defense, by the way. That's what that means. That little yellow sign. Mediocre Spear of Boredom is a 10, 50, 40. Yeah, same thing as the other guy had, right? 10, 50, 40. <clears throat> 10, 50, 40. Um, ranks 1 to 2, as I recall. Yeah. This literally does nothing. No reason to keep this. And... Plus 2 Magic Resistance has a sword. 50, 50, and 10. And a bow, which allows him to hit deeper ranks. Nothing wrong with that. I think we're going to want to get him, though, um, some sort of healing book or something. Make him primarily a healer, I think. Um, strength plus four. Let's give this to this guy. This is, in our, this is in our general inventory, our backpack. So let's take this, hold down the button, the A button, and drag it over. So each character only has five slots. You have a helmet, you have an item, like a ring or an amulet, um, up to two weapon slots, and a uh, breastplate. Um, we do have this to give to somebody. I don't know if anybody's going to need it, but for now we're going to give it to our bard because, as I said, it might make him a healer, and this will, um, aid him. Oops. In, um, healing if I get his faith up. <clears throat> Alright. Let's head into this temple here. Let us kill things. We can talk to this guy. Peace. Greetings, brave adventurers. Do you want to know about the history of this temple? Well, since there are no yes or no buttons, I'll just start. Before the war, this was a temple of the Elder Gods, but people got really tired of them soon after the war. The Elder Gods weren't exactly peaceful, and there had been more than enough killing. Do you remember the Black Inquisition? With all the torturing and confessing? Well, we don't do that stuff anymore. The villagers tore down the symbols of the Elder Gods. Now, if people seek spiritual enlightenment, they come here to pray to the concept of love and understanding. It sounds lame, but it's actually working pretty well. Um, that's just all flavor. We can buy potions here. It's not what I came to get, to be honest with you. So let's not do this yet. I think we have 400 gold to start the game. Here's where we can buy weapons and armor and stuff. But the first thing I want to do is go into the library, I think. <clears throat> let's talk to him. Intelligence is sexy. Isidore, or her, perhaps, I guess. Good day to you, young adventurers. Welcome to the Great Library of Pixton. My name is Isidore, and I'm the librarian here. This library was built shortly after the war by our mayor, Katzel Catwig. You can see a painting of him on the upper floor. Isn't he cute? Before the war, most books were forbidden, but Mayor Catwig gave the order to build this library soon after he got elected. People started to collect books and manuscripts and brought them here. Catwig swore that everyone should have access to this place of knowledge, regardless of their heritage or culture. He hoped that the people would be less interested in another war if they had better education. By the way, have you met my sister Serena? She lives here in Pixton. You should talk to her if you want to know more about the previous generation of adventurers. May your path always be illuminated. Um, let's shop. In particular, I'm looking for... Let's go to this guy. The reason you want to switch to the right character, the, the character you intend to equip the thing with. Um, again, you saw that all the um, weapons and stuff are based on your stats. So if you're looking at the wrong character, you need a wrong readout of um, what what the stats, what the thing does, what, what the effect of the weapon or what or not is. I might get him this, the Shining Chant of Shelter. We have 800, pardon me, it costs 401. It would heal 19, it would allow him to heal 19 health on somebody as a spell, and um, it would inflict, it would give them 100% physical resistance as well, which is pretty fucking good. A bunch of magical stuff that we could do too, but I think we're going to concentrate purely on faith for him. He's going to be our healer slash, our healer slash other good, or other dude. This is much cheaper, gets rid of debuffs apparently as well. But we don't want that. We want this one. Let's buy this. And let's go to his equipment. And let's leave. Let's just leave. Bye. Alright, let's go to this guy's inventory. The bird. I think we're going to pull his sword out. For now. Should I do a sword or this? 
Just sword for now. And we'll give him this. So he has a bow or his healing spell. The problem with that setup, if you're wondering why I was even debating. So if we look at his um, monsters, monsters just like us coming up to up to three, I think, depth. Uh, there's, there's three characters on our team. I think the most you ever meet is three monsters on the other team at once. And we're all standing single file. Essentially right to left uh, would be for us the barbarian. Barbarian in front, this dude in the middle, this guy at the back. Um, monsters the same way. So with the bow, we'll be able to hit the monsters in slots two and three, but not slot number one. Why that's important to note is in the event that these two guys were dead and he was left all alone and there was one monster left, that monster would automatically be in the front slot number one and he would not be able to hit it with a bow and he wouldn't be able to hurt it with this thing. So he'd have to literally destroy the bow or at least drop the bow to pull out his fist and start punching things would be his only option. Just so you know why I was hesitant there. Let's do a few more things like selling off some of our stuff. Hey, blacksmith. Let's talk to Crafty. Hi ho! Are you interested in sharpen? Are you interested in sharp and pointy things? You've come to the right place. My work only consists of the highest quality materials. Since the great mines on the mainland were demolished during the Dumb War, I buy my raw materials mostly for adventurers who stumble upon old weapons during their travels, like us. I take them apart and forge them into weapons. Of course, some parts are still infused with ancient magic or elemental spirits, which can get pretty weird sometimes. But never mind that. My stuff has a never-break guarantee, so you don't have to worry about anything. I hope you enjoy your visit. Let's um, see what he has for sale, and let's sell off some stuff. We don't want this. Let's sell this for 45 gold. Let's sell this for 1 gold, and this for... Ooh, no, let's not sell that at all. Assumed it was another useless thing. Let's get out of here. Um, now that I look, we don't want this on this guy. Because we can put this on him instead. Life plus four, strength plus four, dexterity minus four, but faith plus eight. And since we're primarily concerned with him as a healer, faith will do us well there. Um, which means we might as well give this guy this thing. Eh. Immunity to electricity is cool, but we may not meet anybody with electricity where we're going. So it's probably not that important, to be honest. Let's just leave it for now and sell off the little ring that did nothing. Let's go buy some healing potions. <clears throat> Mushrooms. Ask for potions. Let's buy up a bunch. Well, I guess we only get two. Let's buy two small healing potions, and that's it. We're out of here. Now, as I said, we kind of had our pick of the litter. We could have gone to any dungeon we wanted to, and according to you know the different missions that popped up there, each one is going to lead you to a different dungeon. I tend to take the first one I found, and that's probably why I keep losing. In this case, they want me to go to the old volcano. We don't have any real fire resistance, so we probably... Probably made a mistake here. You can talk to each of these guys, by the way, but they only have flavor text unless they're giving you a mission. Let's talk to these guys. Exclamation sellout. Miyamoto and Sakaguchi exclaim, exclamation sellout. Sale, can we interest you in state-of-the-art magically floating exclamation marks? What, you are heroes? No, we only sell our exclamation marks to desperate citizens. Obviously, because in most games, um, exclamation points denote a character, an NPC who needs help. All right, let's go. I don't know if we're going to do very well here, only because, as I said, we didn't properly prepare for this dungeon, but we'll see. Let's go. The old volcano. Once you go, um, you're on this. You can see on the overhead map below us heading towards the old volcano. En route, you will meet various things that are randomly generated, whether it's an NPC, whether it's a uh, an item, whether it's a monster. It's all randomly generated, which is how it becomes a roguelike like in this case, an unknown creature. You see a tall, dark silhouette standing on the side of the road. It seems to be looking straight into your hero's eyes. Let's stare. We can stare back. We can attack it. We can ignore it. Let's stare back. Unknown creature. Your heroes start staring back at the creature. A short while passes. Your heroes fell asleep. The creature is gone without a trace. Creepy. Um, there are various results from that. I've met a character akin to this several times, and you stare into the eyes. Sometimes it's a different effect. Once it turned out to just be a little boy on stilts and who was freaked out by me staring back at him. I don't know if there was any effect there that I can tell. <clears throat> Let's 
storm giant. There's a giant blocking your path. You dare enter my territory. I want a toll for each pair of legs that sets foot on my ground. We can pretend we don't have legs. <laughs> Bribe him with meat, which we don't have, I don't think. Maybe me and me just can't do it automatically. Or attack him. You know what, let's just be bold. Your heroes start attacking the giant. So here you can see combat broken down. Um, as you can see, we have our three characters from right to left, Bud, Jonquil, and Olney. They have three monsters. Uh, some I forget what that's called. Oh, it's a Creepy Crawler, Storm Giant, and a Creepy Crawler. They're the three ranks. Now, one of the weird quirks of this game is right now we're choosing one character to do one action. Um, we can attack. If we, if we chose Bud, we could attack with his axe. We could attack with the spear. We could also go down here and change this to skills. His skills are rage, which would heal 22% in himself and make him berserk. Um, or Rampage, which would affect both the first and second rank, do 39 damage, would automatically make them bleed. Um, you can see a little stopwatch as well. That little stopwatch denotes how um, how many combat rounds have to pass before you're allowed to use that again. I might start with this. We'll see. Um, this guy's skills, Butterfly Dance, affects range 1 or 2. Butterfly Strike, pardon me. A difficult attack that does a lot of damage, 45 physical damage. Or Blade Dance, which affects the first two rows, does 45 physical damage, and automatically makes them 50% less resistant to physical attacks. Um, or this guy's skills, which are, of course, we know um, healing. It does all these wonderful properties. Um, or this one. does one magical damage to all monsters. Has a 25% chance of inflicting. Let's see what this stuff is. Let's see if we can figure this out. Help. So that uh, curly Q thing is confused. Axe and confusion on the next turn. Okay. Oops. Uh, the, the blue shield is, would lower their magic resistance. We wouldn't really care about that. 25% chance of some weird thing that looks like a little mouse. Sick. Deals less damage and healing. Okay. 10% chance of... These are the two things. 10% chance of... Blessing them, which would make them deal more damage and healing. And a 10% chance uh, that lesser, of them being cursed, which means that whenever they try and do an action, there's a 50% chance the action fails. So, interesting options we have to start. You know what, let's, uh, let's start with just some... Let's do this rather bad. The Blade Dance. So we killed the front one. That other guy's got 50%. Um, oh, there's some electricity right there. So you can see what happens with electricity, or stunning. Um, his only action available to him now is to break free. He'd have to click this to um, get out of his bonds here, essentially. Um, now, one of the other things that's unique about this game is you can see the arrows over the heads of my characters up above. There is no arrow above Jonquil. Why? Because he just did this. Each turn, you cannot use the character you used on the last turn in combat. Unless you are the last character standing, in which case you can use him every turn because he's your only option. So for now, we would want to use only or else we'd want to waste our turn breaking free here. Let's use only. Let's do a... Let's try and use our healing skill on Bud, our new spell. Alright. Uh, now we can get back to him. Let's just use our basic Mediocre Spear of Boredom on the giant. Now once again, unless we're willing to break free, we're stuck with... Oh, what the hell? He's got a lot of um, stat things on him. So you can see the, the <clears throat> lightning bolt. We know what that does. We can see the shield with the green cross. We know what that does. 100% physical resistance or, or elevates his physical resistance very much. I think he's poisoned. I think this is what green drop means, which means he's going to take damage every turn. He is um, sick, which means he does less damage and something else. That little thing between those two points, though, between the green drop and the little mouse button thing, or mouse looking thing on the right, is a squ the squiggly line is maggots or infested. Um, that is, at a certain point in this combat, that infestation is going to hatch and do massive, massive damage to him. So we want to kill this little um, turtle thing, this creepy crawly, fast before that happens. Unfortunately, we can't use Jonquil. His bow can't hit them. 
So either we're left trying to heal Bud again, and then next turn Jonquil can kill it, or we break free. Ah, let's break free. Alright, let's try and kill this thing fast, because otherwise we are fucked. Oh, he, he can't this turn, of course. Alright, we're good. So as you can see, we're getting things out of that as well. And in addition to 46 experience, 47 gold, we're getting all these different items, which we'll now look at and figure out um, what's best to use. We got a healing potion, thank God. We're not going to use it right now, but we got a new um, breastplate. It does plus two physical defense. It also gives you 50% chance versus Leviathan, which is water-based monsters. 50% defense versus water-based attacks. Oh, even better for our bard. Let's give him that. So he was using the nurturing belt of the monk. Pacifistic belt of the monk will be life plus four, strength minus four, faith plus 12. Which means this no longer heals 19. As you can see, it heals 22 because it's based on his faith. Three plus 80% of his faith is what he heals. We might as well give this to somebody. We're not going to meet anybody who's going to have water-based attacks probably, but... If we look at him as an example, his mediocre jacket of mediocrity is plus two defense. Whereas this does plus two defense and 50% uh, defense against water based attacks. So there's no reason not to use it. Now, for the, this is all physical attacks, we definitely want to use this big ass club for Bud. Bud. <clears throat> um. What do we want to replace? Probably this. So we get rid of his mediocre axe of Borden, probably. Hmm, it's doing the same amount. But it does inflict 100%. Uh, has 100% chance of uh, inflicting um, lower, uh, lower physical resistance. I was wrong incidentally earlier. I mentioned um, with this gentleman, just realizing now. 100% inflicts that is not it's not that it gives him 100% physical resistance it has 100% chance of giving him the physical resistance trait which I think halves incoming physical damage I think is what it is um, whereas this would give 100% chance every time you hit that any monster hit thereafter would take extra damage for physical attacks so let's uh, swap out his uh, axe for that at any rate there is a finite amount you can carry we'll probably end up dropping um, some things as we go and do we want anybody using this I mean, strength plus four. Lotus's dexterity. This gives him strength plus four as well, though, so let's stick with what we got. Let's go. And that's 50% uh, resistance versus uh, air based attacks, believe it or not. That kind of looks like an earth thing to me, but it's versus air based attacks. Let's go. Let's not use a potion yet. Yeah, talking carrot. You see a carrot sticking out of the ground. It looks like it's wiggling a little bit. Hey, you, yes you, I'm talking to you. See, I got cursed, and now I have to spend my life as a talking carrot. Not fun. The only way to lift this curse is to eat me. So please, by the great assembler, eat me. Um, sure. One of your heroes picks up the carrot and starts eating it. You hear screaming coming out of the hero's mouth. No, I was wrong, I was just a carrot all along. Oh, well, we got a little bit of experience for that. <laughs> for killing a carrot. Let's continue. Alright. So here we are at the um, the great volcano, the old volcano. Now every dungeon, as far as I can recall, has eight rooms to it. And as I said, it's, it's not a roguelike in the sense of deciding which way to go. We're going through all eight rooms one at a time. Room one, then room two, then room three, etc. Just facing whatever the hell's in your way. Um, very much like darkest dungeons um for now we don't want to do anything here i could heal him with one of these healing potions i maybe even should but it'd be a little premature so let's just go ahead and hope he survives the first battle room one let's skewer their heads so in this case we are facing a fire lizard then imp artillery and magma snake if you want to know what their stats are and stuff you can't figure that out you have to figure out as you go what the various monsters do 
Um, they are very fire-based, unfortunately, and we don't have anything that's going to make us um, very uh, resistant to fire. But what are you going to do? Let's maybe use his thing right off the bat, too. So he killed the second guy. That one's bleeding now. Bleeding means it'll take damage every turn. There's dead from the bleeding. Um, I'm gonna do healing on him for now. I think it's my next move. <clears throat> Club him. All right, we made it through the first room. 40 experience. We found some sort of curse shield of disease, a vaccinating talisman of potency, a balanced claw of strength. Two small healing potions and one big healing potion. All right, and 50 gold. Let's take a look at that claw. The claws are usually based on dexterity in my experience, a lot of it. No, yeah, 70% of his physical strength and 80% of his dexterity. So let's give this claw to him, I think. 39 if I give it to him. Forty, if you give it to him. That's only one extra point. This guy only has the one option. Let's give it to him. So he has a. If he wants to hit the front running guy, he's got um, this. And if he wants to hit the second guy, he's got this. What does this do? Curse shield of disease. Um, it can be used to bash to cause five physical damage, and has a sixty-six percent chance of inflicting. Um, whatever that was called. What was that again? Um, inflicting sickness, which means they deal less damage and healing. It can be used for shield bashing. I don't think I want to use it for anybody. Strength plus four, immunity to poison. I think we're going to give that to this guy for now. It's the same as strength plus four, but we saw that there are monsters. Well, that was outside, wasn't it, that poisoned us? Nah, maybe I'll stay with what I got for now. Um, no, I'll do it. Oops. I don't think we're going to meet any air-based monsters in here. That seems to be about it. Uh, maybe I will use a... Um, a small healing potion for him. And let's go on. Into room two. This game, by the way, yeah, it is not free, uh, unlike a lot of the games we do on this channel. Um, I think it's retailing right now for $9.99 for the Xbox. I think it's also on Steam, or at least on PC somewhere. Um, but it is on sale right now, as far as I can see, for $2.49. I don't remember when I got it. I don't remember why I got it. I probably just saw it and thought, hey, that was fun. So there you go. Let's keep using these when we get a chance, because we really want to uh, clear out some monsters fast. <clears throat> Killed one of them, the other one is in the fire elementals near death. So on top of the fact that they uh, took damage from that, you can see they have little symbols underneath them, uh, Bud and Jonquil. Uh, that's they're, they're on fire, they're going to take damage every turn. I think it might be increasing damage, I forget. Let's, let's look it up. Um, burning causes constant damage. There you go, sorry. As in every turn, we're going to take the same amount of damage. What does his, uh, this do? Heals the whole party. Let's just do it. As you can see, he can't use it for another 14 combat rounds now, though. Again, do we want to do healing? Or do you just want to get rid of this fucking thing? Let's just get rid of it. <clears throat> A weird bow of rage. Nurturing pouch of nutrition. And another small healing potion. Alright. Um, let's look at that bow for our, uh, bard. <laughs> Might even consider the bow, actually, for this dude. 
instead of his mediocre spear of boredom. 1 to 2 range, 30 physical damage. We could have 2 to 3 range, range of 2 to 3 rather, uh, the 36 physical damage. 50% chance of inflicting rage, which is not good. That would mean that they would, uh, I, I assume it inflicts it on them as opposed to me, which would mean that they would gain rage. Um, which would let them do what? If they're enraged, frenzied, pardon me, they deal more damage, but it reduces their defense. And it is fire-based damage, which is, it can set things on fire, maybe, or I don't know. It's fire-based damage, which wouldn't do much of, much to the monsters we're facing right now. So let's not switch right now. What does this do? Life plus 12, strength plus 4, dexterity minus 8. That would not be good for this guy. I was thinking maybe we give him something, because he has nothing in his little uh, amulet section. But that would be shit. Might as well give this guy this for now. It's not going to really do anything for him, but whatever. Let's drink some potions. For sure for him. For Jonquil? Eh, it's a little premature. Let's go onward. <clears throat> Alright. Facing an iron elemental, an imp artillery, and an airborne imp. I'm going to guess the Iron Elemental is very resistant to physical damage. That would make sense to me. Unfortunately, we don't have a lot of choices in, uh, in using anything other than physical damage. Soft, that's what it's called. It means the physical resistance is down. Here's my pickle. I don't know what the hell that means. <laughs> um, hmm. This burning aspect is not good. I don't know, man. It's a tough call as to whether or not we... Um, let's try and get rid of these guys fast. He's burning and I don't want him to burn to death. All right, we're out of here. Holy Kiwari of the Fumbler. Fortified Bonnet of Granny. I don't think any of our guys have helmets yet, or at least not most of them, so that's good. Laughable Chant of Vita. Vengeful Necklet of Hope. And some healing potions, some much-needed healing potions. The heroes have reached the next level. Now you can add points to the attributes. Okay, so for Bud, he's ready to level up to level 2. As you can see, if I, I have... In that central square there, you'll see the number 2. We have 2... Um, two attributes we're allowed to raise. If we raised intelligence or faith, it would only go up by one. If we raised life, it would go up by three. If we raised strength, it will go up by five. If we raised dexterity, it will go up by two. I'm going to choose the strength twice for now. All right. Let's give uh, this guy his stuff. Again, dexterity is his big thing. Let's do dexterity and dexterity. For now, let's just give him the basic things we want, and we want him to be a faith healer, so... May not be his best trait, but that's what we're using him as. Alright, um, let's give him some potions as well. Hell, let's use a big one for him. And he'll use a little one. Oops. And let's take a look at what we got here. What does this do? Holy Kawari of the Fumbler. Range 1 only. Does 47 magical damage if I use it for this guy. Which is pretty fucking good versus well, 46 of that now because we raised his strength so much. Um, I might take that for him just for now. But I want I do want to see this other thing for help. If you look up here, in addition to telling you what these um, various symbols mean, you can go over to elements. There is sort of a paper, scissors, rock thing here. So... Using fire damage is good against air-based monsters. Using phoenix damage, pardon me, is good against griffin monsters, which is air-based monsters. Uh, using griffin is good against worm. Using worm is good against leviathan. And using the wrong kind means you do less damage. 
using specifically the opposite kind, I think. So I think using Weirmon Phoenix would be less damage. Which means you probably don't want to use this in this realm, but whatever. Let's go with my bed here. Fortified Bonnet of Grounding. Let's give that to somebody who doesn't have a helmet. Like this dude. Gives him one magic resistance and makes him immune to that stun effect we saw earlier. Um, the Laughable Chant of Vita would heal 30. I suppose this, which only heals 25, but does give them 100% chance of that uh, physical resistance. So I think I'll stick with what I got. Nothing here. Well, that's not true. Let's give this thing to him. It'll raise his dexterity by four. Yes, it'll raise, lower his life by four, which means his hit points will go down. But he'll do more damage with dexterity-based weapons. And I think that's it for now, right? Let's continue. There is no turning back, by the way. Once you've entered a dungeon, you're committed to it. You either beat the dungeon or you die in the effort. If one of your characters dies en route, by the way, I didn't realize only was also hurt. If one of your characters dies en route, um, if you can get them back to town, you can pay an exorbitant fee to bring them back to life. But if all three of your characters are dead, you're done. Um, let's go for it. I was tempted to try this to see if it gives us the notification that, hey, you did less damage than you should have because it was the wrong element. I wanted to see if Wyrm versus Phoenix really is the problem. I don't know if it's... I don't know if, if the damage is reduced if you're opposite the other party in that circle or if it's the one before you or something. I don't, you know, I don't know. In terms of... Uh, I'm saying in terms of this. Like, does Wyrm do less damage to Phoenix or does Wyrm do less damage to Griffin? I can't remember which. It would do normal damage to one of them. Extra damage to Leviathan, and, and I think half damage to the other. Alright, well, I anyway, was going look at what we found. I don't know. Nothing important. Nothing important. Um, if we look at him 25 healing and inflicts ra or rage or frenzy instead of uh, the other thing, but let's take what we got. Let's continue. Oh no, let's take him a uh, potion. Everyone else is fine, right? No, not quite. Alright. We do have finite potions, so we can't just uh, continually chug them here, but... We'll leave our barbarian for the moment. Hmm. As you can see, sometimes there in rooms there's uh, something other than monsters. In this case, it's a trap! But there seems to be valuable loot. Looks like someone has to operate the mechanism. Looks like this requires not much dexterity. So you can see right down here, we can have somebody try it. And it tells you the percent chance to succeed for only. That will be 69%. Jonquil, 90%. Bud, 58%. Obviously, we'll try Jonquil. There is a penalty for failing, but let's, uh, let's, let's go for it. There we go. Experience and gold. Fine knuckles of crushing. Slimy crossbow of intolerance. <laughs> Pu purifying? I thought it was a putrefying fetish of health. That'd be a magic spell. Might be kind of cool. Got a lot of stuff out of that. Wow. All right, let's take a look at the uh, breastplates first. This is plus three physical resistance versus this is only plus two. So it's definitely a step up. Let's get rid of his mediocre leather of mediocrity. And instead give him the shiny hauberk of tedium. How about these things? Plus two... Physical resistance and immunity to bleeding. Plus two physical resistance and immunity to fire. I think he's getting that. And this is better than just plus two physical resistance, so let's get rid of his, uh, or plus one magic resistance, pardon me. Let's give him this. 
He doesn't have any helmet, so let's give him that one we took off the other dude there. Um, interesting. All right, what do we get here? Um, again, these won't be that much use in here because it does fire damage and using an element against itself. Maybe that's, that's me. That's where it obviously gets problematic. If you use uh, fire against fire, actually, that's that's not thinking about. It. That's where it uh, loses its potency. The doi. Life plus five, dexterity plus five, immunity to infestation. Let's give him that. Now, as you can see, this is kind of neat. Uh, a spell. Let's, what, what's, who's got the most intelligence here? Uh, 16, 24. If we gave it to this guy instead of his bow, as an example. It would do 15 magic damage to every single monster at once and so make them soft, i.e. physical. They take more damage from physical attacks, but he just doesn't have the intelligence, and I don't intend to spend point in points in intelligence. So is that better than this? Maybe. Maybe we'll give it to him instead of the uh, bow for now. And we'll just leave it at that. It does a lot less damage, but it does affect everybody instead of just one in the ranks two to three. So this would allow him to affect somebody in the front row as well if it came down to that scenario I outlined earlier. He'd have a chance, you know? You fools, you cannot carry so many items in your backpack. You have to sell or throw some of your stuff away. Let's throw away the stuff we know is not of any real value. Things that do nothing more than what we started with, you know? There we go. 20 items were allowed only. <clears throat> Open season. All right, we're up against a bunch of fire things. Go figure. Um, once again, I think getting rid of them fast whoops, is a uh, is our best bet. We don't have anything that's going to affect ever, or, you know, both of them. We do have this, of course. It would do extra damage against them because it is Leviathan based and they are fire. So maybe we'll try that actually. As our first attack. Mm. Not great damage, as you can see. Alright. Gonna have to heal him soon. Um, so a symbol under Jonquil means he's confused. Oh, it's gone now. And the one under Bud means he's blessed, which, what does blessed mean? Blessed is, uh, la la la. Deals more damage and healing. Um, so he's a good one to attack with right now. Yes, but is burning, damn it. All right. The heroes have reached the next level. I think for now we're going to stick with our simple plan. We're going to start put, putting points into life as well soon. Maybe every other level. Maybe we'll do it right now. Maybe we'll do uh, one strength and one life. For him, one dexterity and one life. And for him, one faith and one life. Uh, let's heal some people too before we head on to the next room. Fuck it. Um, the only other thing we found was a blood dagger book. Um, it's a spell. Well, let's go to the right guy. So this is doing 15 damage to everybody and 50% chance of softening them. This would be only one character, but chosen out of all three, does 27 magical damage and 50% chance of making them bleed. Um, I think I'm going to stick with the acid rain for now, especially in this fire realm. 
Give me this Leviathan base. All right, we have one more room to go before the boss. No, for fucks. Get rid of this. One sec, seems some coffee. I think we're gonna save the double attacks for that final boss fight. Save these these things up. This is a lot of damage, though. Maybe we'll try that in a minute. Yeah, I'll save it all for the last last fight. Oh, he would have been poisoned there, but he's not. Want to find out? Let's just find out. I mean, it's a bad idea anyway. This is also, I'm, I'm not going to risk it, I guess. We, we think we know the answer anyway, right? Fire damage does less damage to fire base creatures. That makes sense. The fire incidentally, the, he's burning right now, bud. That will eventually wear off on its own. During this combat, I mean, if he was left, there, there it's gone. Shield might be interesting. I'm gonna look at that shield for Bud. What does it do? It does give him 18... F no, plus 3 physical defense, pardon me. Um, and plus 1 magical defense. And it can be used to cause 18 physical damage for him. But let's use it instead of the axe, I think, for now. I'll just use this club for his attack, and this will give him some extra defense. This will throw out, because we can't carry everything. And something else. Sure. All right, let's heal them. Before the boss fight, let's heal everybody. Every dungeon ends with a boss fight. At least in my experience. You have awakened me. Dance to the fire. No one has ever escaped the volcano. Now burn. All right. So with, with this guy in the past, when I've fought him, as far as I can tell, as long as you kill that central guy, the other two die as well. That said, we do have these you know, extra strong physical attacks. So let's, uh, let's give it a shot. Interesting, he stayed in... He, the, the, also, you'll notice these guys don't advance. When that front guy died, they stayed in their respective positions. Getting pretty low on health here, guys. The faster we kill him, though, the faster we uh, get out of here. Now these, these fire weapons might come in handy, especially if we head towards whatever gets affected by fire. That was uh, the Griffin territory, right? So if we can head towards some place that sounds like it would be air-based monsters, and I forget where that is, maybe a mountaintop or something? I don't know. Um, we can put to use all these fire-based weapons we just found in this place. I think I'm going to give him this. 100% chance of setting his enemies on fire. We're out of this dungeon anyway, so it doesn't matter. We're not going to be a lot of, not going to be as many fire-based monsters. That's pretty cool. Gives us some options. 
interesting. Let's look at this old hymn of shelter for him. No, it does less. That is good. If we gotta throw something out, we can throw that out. Let's look over things that are shit. <laughs> there we go. That's all we need. Um, now we are heading home, but that said, we're not home yet, and um, we do have to walk all the way home through the outside, you know? I don't want to waste potions, but if they're in desperate need, let's take them. Let's go. <clears throat> Group of halflings. You see three halflings standing next to the road. One of them is very skinny and pale. That's obviously a Frodo reference. Hello there, isn't it a great day? Hey, would you be so kind and take this ring from us? Um, no. In case it's the One Ring? Dare we take it? Let's find out what happens. Your heroes, take the ring. Darkness rises around you. You feel the gaze of an ancient evil entity. It seems as if you did something horribly wrong. But suddenly, screaming ghostly phantoms arise from the shadows around you. So I guess it invoked some sort of combat. Hmm. <laughs> A bleak woman, a ghost, and a greedy ghost. All right. So he's cursed, so he has a 50% chance every time he does an action that the action fails. So let's not use his action right now. Instead, let's do a healing on him. Get his physical defense up. Oh, we got the one ring. <laughs> Hood of Humanity, Healing Potions. I've never gotten that before. That's kind of neat. <clears throat> let's see what that does. And let's also fucking heal him. Um, what does the One Ring do? Interesting. When you use it, or is it automatic? Is it a... Does it do automatically heal one per turn, and you have Shadow, and and, and you're Cursed? Curse, those actions fail at 50% chance. Um, concealed evades attacks at 50% chance. I'm not going to use it. <laughs> Neat, though. Ugh. Immunity to infestation is kind of neat. If you get back to town, you're fully healed, by the way. So you only need enough to get you there. Adventurer, you see a young adventurer standing at the side of the road. Good day to you. You seem like a capable group of heroes. Would you mind helping me out? I have to hunt down a troll for my quest, and the rest of my group has been knocked unconscious. Yeah, I'll help you. Great, I knew you had it in you. Be careful, he can regenerate. You're okay, Gibbs. I love you. Okay. Um... Let's use our double attacks. Easy peasy. Throwing that fly bonnet of indifference out is shit. And off we go. Idol of ambiguity. There's a bizarre idol standing on the side of the road. Two faces appear to be floating in front of it. We have a fine riddle for you. If you answer correctly, we will bestow great wisdom upon you. 
What do you throw out when you want to use it, but take in when you don't want to use it? An anchor. Throw out when you throw out when you want to use it. Take in when you don't want to use it. Correct, you should always attach the anchor to your boat before throwing it out. <laughs> so we got experience out of that. Alright. Continue our travel. Now one of the things I, I, I always dislike in in roguelikes, because you do replay them, is when you encounter a riddle and the riddle is actually a riddle, you have to answer it. That that statue head thing does have multiple riddles. It's not riddles, it's not just one. But as you can see, I'm if you if you knew that answer from before, you would now know it forever, you know. Troll the trolls, the old volcano. This is great. I hope you have I hope you gave them a serious ass pounding or ass kicking. Why are you looking at me weird? Because you're using homophobic humor. Um, ahem. Here is some armor that I found on my way to town. It's too heavy for me. All right. Probably not going to be as much use to us now as it would have been at some other point in the game. <laughs> there are still fire-based monsters out there, but that's the, that's the only dungeon that is overrun with just fire-based monsters, you know? So who are we talking to here? Let's just see what this guy has to say. And who else? There's Whoring. Is one of them. The Shroom. Looks like Whoring or Shroom are our next... Um, we have to take one of these two quests. Now we know we have a lot of fire-based weapons. So let's take a look again at the... Uh, pff, left bumper for help. Okay, no, I actually want to... I actually want to see the old help. <laughs> Alright, well, whatever. Let's talk to him. Diary of the Flame Tender. Stormy Peaks. Whoa. What? Oh, sorry. I zoned out a little there. You know how it is, man. Or maybe you don't. It's freaky stuff, though, man. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh, ahem. Oh, yeah. Listen, can I ask you a favor? There used to be another fire mage in Pixton. I forget his name. I forget his name, but he was a little better off than me. I heard he had some kind of club where he advised people on fire safety. He's long gone, though. This voice would have fit the first phrases he was putting out where he sounded stoned. Now I want to elaborate on that idea, man. Step up my entrepreneurship, you know. But for that, I need this guy's diary. It got buried with him, but his crypt is now flooded with monsters. Will you get his diary for me? Um, probably. I'll say maybe later. Sheesh, that sucks. But um, maybe you're right. Maybe my idea is stupid after all. All right, I'll go back to my alley. Yo, I caught a rat today. Tonight's menu? Fresh rat with a little tobacco afterwards. <laughs> it sounds killer, right? Seriously, you, you sure don't want to help me out? Yeah, I'll come back and help you. Um, I just want to see what this guy's is. Shroom. I don't feel like doing a voice. Good day to you. Have you eaten these creatures they call fish around here? Horrible. It's almost like every single living thing on this island was meant to be inedible. Now I am in a pickle. I thought it said, now I am a pickle at first. I was like, this is really weird. He's a shroom. He's saying he's a pickle. I need some kind of fish or sea creature. Anything for my soup to shroom. But all the river and coastal fish are disgusting. There is one creature, one, though, that might do. It is a blind and rather large fish, commonly found in dark dungeon pools. Would you catch me f two or three of these? Then I could advance to the next dish. Maybe later. Yeah, well, you would probably make the fish useless by hacking it to pieces of those bulky weapons of yours. Maybe I'll find someone else to give me this creature. That young man jumping around in his underwear and cape seems rather eager to do so. Well, something. Maybe I'll ask him. Let's go take this one. I think this is... Probably dealing with air-based monsters, given it's a Stormy Peak thing. Alright, this is our next mission. Dungeon Stormy Peaks. But again, if you wrote this shit down in advance, you'd know, okay, we want fire-based weapons. As an example. So we want A, fire-based weapons, and B, people who are, you know, immune to air, uh base stuff. So let's give him back this old um, this thing, which will make him 50% resistant to griffin attacks. Um, Stormy might sound like an electricity too. We already have this guy with his helmet, right? No, I guess not. We have this guy with his helmet. That's pretty good um, defense in general. We don't need the defense against fire per se. He seems to take the brunt of the damage. Let's give him this. Because it's four defense, right? Instead of three. Then let's give this guy... Three. 
And let's give this guy, well, keeping him with magic defense is probably good, because it's usually only magic that reaches the back rows. Let's keep this, though, because we are going to face water when we do the guy's fish quest, right? We're going to call it quits here in one second, guys. We're at the one-hour mark. I'm just going to finish um, setting up these characters so they're ready to go, that's all. Um, before we before we sell off anything, what else do we need to do here? I'm pretty sure fire is good against these guys. So let's um maybe go with that for now. I think we're selling everything else we have except for the perhaps the water one so we have room for other things you know matter of fact let's call it right here guys and we'll uh, when we come back we'll finish selling our stuff and we'll um head on up to stormy peaks um it's like I said, it's not a bad game it's kind of fun um it, it's hard to narrate because it's like, okay, now we're going to use this attack, now we're going to use this attack. So I hope it's still entertaining to watch. And if you're interested, like I said, it's a very cheap game. Uh, available on the Xbox One if you're looking for some sort of turn-based, roguelike type game. This might scratch your itch. Let's head on out. How do I do this? Start. Save and exit. Alright guys, see you tomorrow.